Alrighty, hello everybody. Welcome to Beyond a Reason. How's it going? Hope your day is going pretty well. We do have an 8v8 here on failed negotiations, where negotiations have certainly failed here. So, leading the cool color team, we have Hello Austin, who is the currently the best um, team player in the game, which is super exciting to see a game from him. And a recent game too, this was played less than a day ago, so certainly very fresh uh, with all the meta and stuff like that. Playing Cortex in the dark blue. Uh, 57 TS score here for him. Uh, overall 30.40 for the cool color team. Overall TS score for the orange or the warm color team 30.43. And leaving that warm color team is Sad Panda. Certainly no slouch themselves. Uh, going to be going for the red here in the playing cortex as well. 42 TS hailing from the Philippines. So fantastic. We can see some of these battle plans laid out here. We have uh, Mr. Tilester. <laughs> No idea what that's supposed to mean. Gonna be going around here, grabbing these mexes most likely. Unfortunately, gonna be running into Austin, looks like it, who's gonna be going for this T1 Cortex shipyard. Uh, certainly very scary. So, as far as I understand it, the way this map is played is these little island players that are kind of separated from the main island, gonna be going for our shipyards here. So, that's gonna be B Dog playing Armada in the light green, Austin, which we've already discussed. Uh, tiles over here in the orange and Dr. Smashy. So um, the bad thing for the warm colored team is that tiles is not um, doesn't seem to, like they're going to be the best player here. A lower TS score doesn't mean that they're going to play bad, of course, but just that they're certainly not going to be the you know most outstanding best player in the world, unfortunately, and going against somebody like Austin, who is presumably going to be going this way across the map uh, is quite scary for them. So probably not going to be too effective for him there. Dr. Smashy versus um, Mr. B-Dog over here. Uh, probably going to be going for Dr. Smashy if we're just looking at numbers. But of course, that is much, much closer of a naval battle here. Also, even though they are bot lab right now, S going to give it to you in the light pink playing Armada. Also going to be going for a shipyard right there. So three naval players for the warm colored team, only two for the cool colored team, which might mean that they have the advantage on this uh, little ground skirmish here. It's gonna be going across the center of the island. Something to keep an eye on there for sure. A little pawn v grunt battles here. Nothing too crazy. Pawns do win if they can get in close, but of course, grunts can kite pawns. If you ever played this game, kinda know how that stuff works. One of the first things you learn is is those kinds of matchups there. The, the old bot lab matchups and yeah. Both of them have their upsides and downsides, weaknesses and strengths. Unfortunately, Lazarus, ooh, trying to get some of that uh, reclaim metal there from the Ferns and Stones. Lots of reclaim on this map, actually. You can see just casual hundreds just scattered across the map on these coastlines. Uh, and of course, some energy trees in the back here as well. So that's quite good um, if you're going for those quicker starts and yeah, getting your reclaim bots out early. Like some of these better players are doing, like a polygon in the light blue playing Armada is going to be doing. Uh, grabbing that reclaim is super, super important. And a lot on the center island as well. 1.15k across the whole middle of that island there. Unfortunately, no geothermal power plant spot on top of this mountain, which I think should be added. I'm going to start a protest petition, along with getting rid of all the, all the glitters map games. <laughs> <laughs> Some rovers did sneak by here. Four rovers here. Going to be harassing this construction bot. Also going to be grabbing this mechs, but it looks like they do want the bot there, which I think is, smart, is a smart play. Something I would do myself if I ever managed to do something like that. Grabbing the mechs a little bit later. Uh, does end up damaging one of the rovers, but sometimes that's just how it goes. Going to be grabbing another mechs here. Ooh, that uh, does skip that one. But yeah, two mechs and a construction bot, even if they all died now. That's still an incredible pick for him. Looks like three of them do die. This max is in danger of going down. Probably will be going down there. I do imagine with just a little bit of micro. But thankfully for the cool color team, even if they do are getting harassed in the back line, they aren't really putting pressure in the back line for the warm color team. But self-destruction over there, be not alarmed. Uh, they do have this center island, which along with the reclaim, you do have two maxes here with 4.8 metal scores. So that's going to be, you know, Two and a half times better than the regular land maxes. And I believe the C maxes are also 1.8. Yes. So better than the land and the C maxes by over double, which is super, super nice. Going to be gonna, grabbing them a little bit more for their economy here. But currently, the bounce power for the economy is, is quite even. You know, disregarding that reclaim there that it spiked up for the warm color team there for a little bit. You have a skirmishing going on here for Mr. B-Dog. <laughs> going to be making the Dolphins, which I've heard are quite good, even though the rest of Armada T1 is not as good as Cortex. Of course, you know, any kind of generalizations like that are, you know, you should just be wary of. 
all navy is good in the right hands, but uh, that is something that apparently is the meta from what I've heard. We do have Hello Austin air transporting a warm colored construction bot right here. Uh, which is pretty funny. It looks like they are going to be converting that to their own side, which you actually really don't see in a lot of games just because it's so situational. But uh, there you go. Free construction bot, and I guess that's why he's the top of the leaderboard. <laughs> Commander all the way out in the ocean here. A little bit of a risky spot. Does have a torpedo up there, as well as a you know healthy riptide and a little herring there as well. So he's got a little bit of, a, of defenses there and a submarine. You know, he, he's decently defended, right? But yeah, that con, that con pick was funny. It looks like, is he going to be doing it again? If he's able to, certainly, yeah. <laughs> going to be grabbing another construction bot from Mr. Shad Hunter in the yellow. Oh, there we go. Oh, not quite. Not sure what happened there. I think because he was moving that construction bot instead of just letting it stay still. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, you never see this happen. This is really funny. Is it super big deal? Probably not. This is probably the bigger deal, honestly. So we do have five Blitz light tanks blitzing their way through these nice tropical grass fields here. Going to be taking down some ponds, taking down some mexes. There we go. Four of them left there. Yeah, they're just fashioning them ponds. Really, really great. Do love me some Armada T1 vehicle play. Um, they are going to be... Yeah, probably caught out by some pawns here eventually. Bomber there, doing trying to do a little strike. Don't think any of those bombs did hit, though. And yeah, some more pawns going down. Blitzes are dying as well, though. Trying to get this last mech, but doesn't quite get it. What was that mech at? Oh, 21%. That's rough. That's rough. But yeah, honestly, while the construction stuff is funny, um, yeah, that was much, much more impactful. But still, props to Austin, though. Do whatever you can. Dr. Smashy losing the naval war over here. Maybe. Actually, reptiles are pretty good, of course. Faster firing, good damage, good health. You know, all in all, Assault Frigate's quite nice there. And he does have some herrings in the back, providing a little bit of support there. And some anti air in case some shurikens do decide to come along. Austin posturing here for a naval offensive. Unfortunately, he is 2v1, though, for him. Am I rooting for Austin? I don't know. I always, I tend to root for the losers, as long as they're, they're having a good time. I, I have not looked at the chat beforehand, so I have no idea if it goes off the rails. It tends to, especially with our better players. We always get very, very salty, which is unfortunate to see. Mad Dog with some more blitzes here. Going to be grabbing another mech. Does lose quite a lot of blitzes, though, but also kills quite a few pawns. So overall, I think it's a good trade. And honestly, you're even just drawing armies away from the front line is always a good strat. Does take out two mechs there. So, you know, fantastic job. So even though the cool color team has the center island blitzes are still able to sneak by like you do have all of these sea lanes open it's very very shallow water it's going to slow some stuff especially bots and vehicles bots and vehicles especially vehicles apologies um but nothing to worry about gauntlet is going to be going up here not going to be able to reach much barely touching the opposite side of the shore they're going to be grabbing that laser tower eventually right yeah, just reclaim bots over there. Looks like we do, you know, B-Dog has decided to come in here with his naval uh, little force here. They've taken a lot of damage, though, but they do manage to grab all of these assault frigates. One torpedo urchin left there. Uh, that is going to be going down as well. Eventually, they're pretty tanky, honestly. Um, considering what? Is this a destroyer? I always forget the names. Yeah, so Corsair Destroyer plus two dolphins. It takes a little time to grab that thing down. Urchin over here as well. Still, you know, getting some damage in there. And uh, it is being healed by Dr. Smashy. But Dr. Smashy has to watch out. Um, that destroyer, ooh, does go down to the submarine there. But destroyers do have underwater missiles, which are able to target those commanders underwater. Do quite a good bit of damage as well, if I might add. Nice bombing strike force here from Screaming Meowsters. Looks like he is going for the Armada Stormbringers. Let's go. Love me some T1 Armada Air, which, again, I think is worse than Cortex T1 Air. Um, fighters don't really have a lot of micro ability, as far as I'm aware. It's kind of just whoever has more, whoever are the better ones. Ooh, advanced instruction bot almost going down there. He still managed to get some damage across, but that would have been a really, really nice pick. Of course, the lab is still up. It wasn't immediately reclaimed, but still. T2 construction bot is a T2 construction bot, and you want to delay people getting T2 by whatever uh, metric you can. So nine minutes in, we're already seeing T2 here, and these bombers doing quite a good job. You almost wish they would focus on stuff instead of just flying around here. But still, from a 17 TS player, I like the plays. A little bit of harassment, a little bit of fear instilling in people's hearts. But they will have to be prepared for a little bit more air defense. And you can see Mr. Shad Hunter here. Our kind of better players do have a lot more anti-air there. 
I think because Shad Hunter was harassed by uh, Mr. Austin as well with that air transport, he's, he was a little bit more wary than the rest of the team, um, which worked out to his favor there. Synthetic with a big pawn army here, gonna be ooh trapping these blitzes in the water and destroying a little bit of Agincourt happening right there. I would imagine. I would imagine. You would imagine too. Sorry for the constant audio screening. I just I'm not entirely sure, and I don't hear it as the same level as you do because audio interfaces are weird and. I don't know what's going on. I hope you know what's going on, because somebody has to. Uh, destroyers here. Yeah, big destroyer fleet. Lots of assault frigates as well. Just <laughs> just a really great fleet. Fleet? Fleet. Um, a couple of death cavalry resurrection subs as well, which is great, because there's 2,000 metal here resting on the ocean floor as much as a downed commander. Certainly not, you know, an amount of metal that you'd want to give up here, but a nice little orca here, able to harass, keep those death cavalry subs back, healing themselves instead of grabbing that reclaim there. Maybe, there, yeah, there we go. I was like, uh, you got to get those destroyers a little bit closer to uh, start taking down that sub, and it does go down there. Unfortunately, one sub is no match for a ton of destroyers. Just the way things work, right? Smashy still holding out here against B Dog, even though B Dog has basically been winning this whole time. Shark's Teeth going to be coming up here. Uh, I, I don't really ever like T1 fortifications, you know, land or sea. Uh, they just are never really that effective, unfortunately. Um, they go down too quick. They don't have enough health. And most of the time, you're not really able to get them where you want them. So people can just kind of walk around for the most part. But if you have some mines in conjunction with them, they can work occasionally, occasionally. Not going to be dissing anybody's strats because uh, who am I to judge, right? I am not top one on the leaderboard. I mean, neither is b Dog, but... That's besides the point. Uh, Destroyer is great for kind of this, you know, just holding back, getting some good damage in there. They have really, really long range on their, you know, above water cannons. Their underwater torpe torpedoes are do have less range than submarines here, which is why you'll frequently see submarines just sitting quite out of range there and able to kind of harass them down. But some of these destroyers or uh, frigates should be microed backwards. Yeah, it does lose a frigate there that probably could have been avoided as it was low health for quite some time, but again... Perfect micro is never something that's going to happen. A polygon, 34 level TS player here. He's able to get a little bit of a beachhead on the warm colored team team side, but I don't really know what he's doing here. Going to be grabbing this mechs, but some rocket bots here going to be spotting him, uh, you know, doing some damage, but they do get D gun in the end. Unfortunately, Shadowhunter here is here with his commander with a laser tower, and since polygon does have less health than Shadowhunter, he will be going down there if, uh, yeah, Shadowhunter was able to keep up just a little bit. Another D-Gun there. So quite a few kills here for a Polygon, but honestly, at this point, I'd just be kind of going back. He doesn't really have the army to back it up, and nobody else is coming in. A few pawns here landing over on the left side. Going to grab this anti-air tower, uh, but nothing crazy, right? Looks like Austin is continuing his offensive here. Yeah, again, a lot of destroyers against frigates. Destroyers are going to outclass them. Slower firing rate, but more damage and longer range. So they're able to get better value. A lot like these hounds. You're able to just outrange a lot of things, especially because they are tier 2. So against anything T1, they're going to absolutely destroy. So uh, got to love, you know, our, our dog Fido buddies. Absolutely just, you know, clearing the field. Flamethrower turret here <laughs> being quite cost effective up at three kills. Almost four there, I think. They do go down. And yeah, this is a great push by JTL. Able to just keep holding this island and use it as a base to attack from. Shadhunter harass on multiple sides here. He has to worry about a polygon over here with his annoying little beachhead. And of course... <laughs> The great big green ball of death. Some blitzes coming up the side of the ramp here, and these hounds have nowhere to go. Not a great place to be in. Unfortunately, I don't think there are enough blitzes to kind of capitalize upon this, but I'm not entirely sure. It looks like they do reach the hound lines, but how many they'll take down, or hound many, is, uh, you know, up to debate. Looks like they might grab one there. Yeah, one or two. Um, yeah, I'd say it was, it was good. Um... Ooh, and those hounds are self-destructing now, which I think is kind of interesting. Gonna be grabbing these fiends, maybe. Um, and yeah, there they go. Rip JTL's push. Still thought it was a good idea. Um, and pretty good execution as well. So honestly, in terms of balance of power, I think the cool color team is doing a little bit better. They have this nice little beachhead here. Having the central island is huge. Austin is able to push alongside here. The only point where they were failing um, is right over here a little bit with uh, B-Dog not quite able to push out Dr. Smashy. And even... Our, you know, nice little tan player here uh, is able to get naval dominance in the region, at least for now, defensively at least, although he's definitely not in a position to push or anything like that quite yet. Leave that for a few minutes, most likely. And yeah, Austin just wreaking havoc here. These destroyers, again, getting huge value. Um, yeah, four kills on this one destroyer. Third, ooh, 
13 on that one, 4 on another one. Yeah, they're doing quite well for themselves for sure. S can give it to you. Uh, yeah, so unfortunately, <laughs> these guys aren't able to win the 2v1. Um, they both have their shipyards up, but Contra is kind of strangled. Or, uh, sorry, Tiles is kind of strangled here economically. Not able to expand. Not able to grab any of these mexes. Not able to get any reclaim. Really, really rough position for him. And Naval is, is kind of a uh, metal heavy for sure. Uh, you know, still T1. Almost getting like a thousand metal on some of these bigger ships, right? So you definitely need that good max economy, which he's just not able to get. S gun give it to you in a little bit of a better position. He can always retreat back on the land. Um, but if Austin does just fully take control of the sea, it's basically over for, uh, you know, Tiles game here. And I keep saying Tiles. It's tied, not tied Jester. I, you know what? I only have so much, so much mental capacity, right? <laughs> I'm doing my best. Uh, Welder's here for Garbager. Looks like he's helping Synthetic here, who has been EMP'd. Uh, I think it was from a spy bot. Kind of looks like it. Yeah, with that really long time, I think it was from a spy bot. But might also be some latent EMP thing hanging around here somewhere. And yeah, some Sheldon Balls trying to form up for Shad Hunter, but doesn't quite have the mass for that, unfortunately. And it looks like they are going down there. Um, there are some artillery in the back here. Nice rattlesnake up here. Really, really able to get a nice good view of the beach here on the warm colored team's side. And uh, doing good damage there as well. Shad Hunter moving around on this side with some amphibious ducks. Trying to shut down Austin. Realizing, realizing that his teammates desperately need help. Uh, Mr. Jester over here. This commander almost dead. Doesn't have a shipyard anymore. Looking real rough for him. Shuriken's out to help as well from Sad Panda. Who's again like trying to do his best to keep this front alive. But I think it might be too little too late for this side of the uh, map. So... <laughs> going to have to kind of put your hopes in Dr. Smashy or that you're able to kind of break uh, this center line, which again, they might not be able to do. We'll just see how it plays out there, I guess. But yeah, Ducks, great. Uh, fantastic unit against mass ships. Of course, Destroyers still have that, you know, underwater uh, torpedo there. And uh, Assault Freyas do as well, but no, Assault Freyas don't. I'm sorry. It's just the Destroyer. But again, a lower range there, although I think the Ducks actually have a, a smaller range there, and they're slower as well, but it's easier to mass them for sure. Yes, come give it to you. Reconstructing their shipyard there. Thankfully, they have a lot of reclaim here that they can grab. Uh, Jester also has to watch out for all this reclaim right on the bottom of the motion that they're not collecting, which is uh, always rough to see. Oh no, Austin's commander going to be sailing forth here on this island in the top right of the map. Hate to see it. Um, will it end in death for Jester or for Austin? Who knows? A nice laser tower there would be nice. It's got, it's going to be Jester if he reaches him, which looks like he will. We do have uh, Mr. You know, Doctor. Sorry, Doctor Smashy going to be going down on the left side of the map here uh, with some nice assault frigates and destroyers. Pushing back B-Dog, who we struggling against before. Looks like he just got that economy up and was able to continually defend, uh, you know, against these pushes. Of course, you'll always be more economic on the defense, for the most part, than you will on the offense there. Um, looks like Jester was able to stick in it. Um, going to be making a laser dart here. Does realize that Austin is on the move, but unfortunately just decides to cancel it. Going to be trying for an offensive here, but I don't really think it's necessary with Ducks closing in as well. And with Austin going in the water, I don't think um, that commander is going to be surviving. Not sure if this attack was worth it. Took out Solar Collectors, a couple mexes. Um, if he gets this commander, that'd be nice. Uh, but again, both these can just be reclaimed now. So that's going to be 4,000 metal in the field. Yeah, and both corpses. Or, sorry, uh, deactivated robots are there. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, speaking of censorship, I did... YouTube does have a new UI now. I think that's being released. A select few lucky people, which apparently is absolutely horrendous. So if any of you do have that, you should let me know <laughs> what you think of it. Yeah, again, I think the consensus is that it's it's looking pretty poor, but hopefully since it's just an A-B testing, they will be getting rid of it. Um, the cool color team continuing to try to advance on this beachhead, but again, I think people get D-Day in their minds. and They're like, wow, that must have been so easy, but uh, yeah, very difficult to establish beachheads here for sure, especially against static defenses. Fortunately for them, Mad Dog is still on that T1 grind, <laughs> uh, which is not a good thing. Although he has a relatively large base. Oh, uh, it looks like he does actually have the T2 up there. Um, but not quite T2 economy yet, it looks like. Yeah, he's getting there for sure. Fiends for a sad panda here as well. Some shurikens able to stop this welder push, which is very nice. Welders, of course, it makes sense for them to be <laughs> electrified. Given that they're basically the gods of electricity. They used to be called Zeus's once upon a time before the name change. How many... 
how long ago is that now is that over a year two years even no i think it's just a year ducks again just trying to mass really really easy to mass dust max ducks sorry 25 of them here and uh, soon they're going to be able to or want to start to push not sure if it's going to happen but uh they're going to do their best here destroyers continually put out here for hello austin sorry cruisers the old buccaneers and they have a much larger torpedo range than their destroyer t1 friends Looks like Dr. Smashy, again, still on the offensive here. Doesn't really have anything to contend with except some light gunships, uh, which, again, is not not going to be a problem here for him at all. Mr. Meowser's here. Is he still on T1 air? That's uh, that's rough. He does have a T2 economy, but still on that T1 air. Not looking too good for him. Shipyard out for him as well. So hopefully trying to mop up uh, Mr. Doctor here, which looks like it's going to happen eventually. He's not sending any new units in. Uh, some cruisers actually coming in there, which I think is not the greatest idea, but... That's just my opinion. I don't know if cruisers really have a lot of anti air. Um, and if gunships start massing, it's not going to look good for them if they can't really fire back. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, Mr. Uh, our pink player here, we actually haven't seen anything of. Sending some platypuses over. And they do have some nice anti air when they're swarmed, which is, again, easy to do. Quite cheap. 260 metal. A relevant amount of energy. And uh, yeah, they're going to be establishing. Well, I wouldn't say establishing a beachhead because there's no no fortifications here being uh, built for them. But they're just going to be going on a little raid here. T2 Max going down. Very nice. Again, if you had better micro, it'd be nice. Um, so those guys would not lose like a quarter of their health to the T2 Max explosions. But they're just going to continue running through them. And again, like this fusion reactor, when this goes down, that's going to be a lot of platypuses dying. Yeah, there you go. Unfortunate. Um, so. <laughs> The buildings are defending themselves, even if it is in death. We'll say avenging themselves. Looks like those commanders in the back line here did get resurrected. Again, what I thought was going to happen. No reason they shouldn't be. Mr. Jester here, uh, trying to make an aircraft plant. Looks like he only has one construction plane. It's going to be a, a rough life for him there. Um, <laughs> probably be taken out here sooner rather than later. Tidal generators in the back here for Austin getting taken out by these platypuses. And these things are great. Because they're basically like a hovercraft bot, but you don't have to make a hovercraft factory. So they have all the pros of a hovercraft uh, plant, but none of the downsides. So they're they're quite good. Um, yeah, I kind of wish that they weren't stuck right there, but looks like our, our poor one chef guy is uh, not thinking about the Myco too much. It looks like we do have experimental units enabled. So the demon flamethrower mech going to be coming out here. That T3 Cortex mech, so, so good. It has good single target, good health, pretty good speed, nice range. Honestly, it's a really, really good all-rounder. Even has some light anti air with it as well. But they will fall to D-guns there. There we go. I believe he did miss the first D-gun, which is always a little bit worrying. Oh, looks like uh, Mr. Scarpy is going to be going down here. Yep, and there goes the commander. Demon almost dead as well, but they kind of accomplished what they wanted to. Yeah, definitely got some good damage in there, and there's some more on the way. That's for sure. But definitely, yeah, want to heal those up if you can. Always better to heal up than uh, make new ones. That's for sure. Especially a little in the way of an air war here, which is uh, actually, yeah, really surprising. Especially when you kind of have these choke point maps. Air always tends to uh, be produced in large amounts here. Marauders and Razorbacks did make it across the way for JTL. Another good attack here, but does retreat, which is interesting. I think he does want to mop up this little beach area here, but I don't think that's quite the right idea because they're just aphids are sitting right back there that you could have gotten instead of you know whatever craps over here but i think the idea is that they want to make their next defensive maybe a little bit easier to do so they're mopping this up real quick um which maybe isn't the worst idea or they also might be fearing a commander sitting up there cloaked ready with that d-gun holy cow demon flamethrower again look how oh, these guys can move so fast they have such good health really really great sustainment they're like honestly i think they're better than a juggernaut I think you'd do better for yourself in most situations to produce more of these guys than you would to be making some juggernauts. Just because juggernauts are just so slow. So slow. Which makes sense for balancing purposes. But, yeah, these guys are so much faster and they just have great damage. Again, still able to melt things like this if he didn't go down. Um, so, yeah, very, very nice there. Marauders do get in the back line of Mr. Chev's base. Unfortunate. No more uh, platypuses for him, although his are still in the back line here. He has a few. He did manage to micro them, kind of clear out this back line in, uh, you know, concordance with Dr. Smashy there. And yeah, the C on the left side does go to the warm colored team, but on the left or on the right side, yeah, Austin is still, you know, killing it over here. Not too great. Yeah, Mr. Chev, I think, is basically out of the game there. There goes his Avises, as well as the, you know, attacking force, but, you know, minor casualties to destroy what is basically a nuclear reactor, right? 
So, fantastic. Another demon. Oh, no. Uncontested here in Mr. Scarpy's base. Quite unfortunate. After losing his commander, killing another demon that came into his base, the old third demon always gets you. And looks like these Avises, if they don't go down the demon, they're going to be down, going down to the cruise missile ship in the back there. They do actually go down the demon. Nice job, buddy. 63 kills on this bad boy. Sure, it's mostly crap tier 1, but still, very, very nice. Again, demon's able to just clear out an opponent's base. Of course, um, so it looks like we do have one player basically eliminated. Actually, two on the warm color team, because we do have Mr. Jester here who's kind of out of commission for the most part, not really doing anything relevant. As well as poor Eskun Gibitsio, despite having a baller name, uh, doesn't quite... <laughs> have the skills to back it up which is fair again going against the top player in the world right now for no reason um, is always going to be difficult a lot of americans in this match must be a uh, prime time for america when this match was played uh, i think it was 17 hours ago from this recording so mm, i don't know you can do the math man what am i some kind of nerd never do math on camera that's what i always tell myself look at all these demons again just making it on the main lane uncontested at this point it's basically just if austin is able to do more damage or whether these demons from contra here are able to do more damage and right now i'm putting my money on the demons austin was able to do good work in the early game but and yeah even ships on the back line for the cool color team if i was austin i'd be sending stuff around this way here too um although of course there is the argument to be made that you don't really want to spread out your forces too much but i think this is kind of uh, something you can't really avoid. Yeah, these demons oh, can just wreaking havoc. That's going to be Mr. Synthetic here down, which again, not the highest TS player there ever was. But when you're making Aphises, that's a that's a pretty big loss for sure for your team. A couple demons here. There we go. <laughs> it's like they're kind of going the wrong way. There we go. Synthetic going to be going down as well. Pretty rough there. Pretty rough there. Um, Garbager might be going down as well. It looks like he is the next target. Does have a gantry up here, trying to make some Razorbacks, but. Uh, yeah, we'll see how that does. We'll also, see how this little Marauder push around the side goes. Um, Austin over here with some cruise missile ships as well. Able to harass Sad Panda, which is really rough because Sad Panda, again, the best player for the warm color team. Really, really don't want to be losing your team leader there while Austin has been, you know, comparatively just fine. Not harassed at all this whole game. Even if his economy isn't the best on his team, he's uh, still pulling his weight with all the damage that he's been doing. I'll be interested to see the graphs there for who's done the most damage. Right now, I think Mr. Contra is a contender here. Yeah, if he gets these Avises, ooh, it might just be over for the cool color team. It's really, really not looking good for him. That's all I got to say. Of course, keep an eye on the minimap over there for Sad Panda. Looks like he is the one to be attacked by these Marauders. Trying to bomb them out there. Um, but, yeah, not, not quite working out for him. Marauders, of course, a little bit of anti-air for them as well. Um, and trying to just rally everything he has. Um, uh, doesn't really, I don't know, all these grunts. Like, he hasn't really made really a land army. If I say really again, it's going to be over for my career. I don't know what exactly the plan was there. Unfortunate, Sad Panda basically knocked out of the game. Uh, which is definitely not what you want to see. Those Avises did go down for Garbager. And that's a really, really high um, economy player in the back line there. Who've been taking up the whole game. Just going to be going down. Uh, we do have B-Dog here basically in the death throes. <laughs> well, I think he's already past the death throes. This, this looks like the, the old shedding of the mortal coil. <laughs> not looking great for him there. In terms of the center island, has kind of been lost there. Um, JTL still sticking it out there. Honestly, another contender for most damage done. Absolutely wrecking with these Marauders. Of course, Austin in the back line there was going to get some damage done in there as well. But the Marauders kind of just sealed the deal for Mr. Sad Panda, unfortunately. What is... Yeah, I'm just looking, not looking in chat. Worst mistake of my life. <laughs> we'll never be doing that again. Demon going to be... Ooh, with the self-explosion there. Ah, did they self-explode? I don't think so. It's a pretty sad self-explosion. 25% of the T2 mechs. Uh, I don't think they did end up making that self-explosion happen. Or detonation, whatever you want to call it. Looks like Austin is out here with the old... Is that a radar plane? Yes. Um, but does he have the air power to back it up? No, he's just got some fighters. No bombers or anything crazy. Does have the Despot battleship out. Surprised he's not making any um, any big flagships yet. I feel like that would really help him. Um, I mean, they are, of course, they are quite expensive. They take time to make. But they're really, really good at doing that eco damage. Um... Especially when your side is might be losing the eco war there a little bit in terms of economy It's really hard to tell again. There's no way to at least no way I know to toggle without the reclaim um, But it looks like the cooler team is actually higher up in the eco um, Than the warm color team which is a little bit surprising if you just look at the map 
it doesn't really look like it um but i guess maybe all this stuff over here is providing quite a bit 153 metal there definitely nothing to you know not taken into consideration there's there was a phrase there i wanted to use um but i, I quite wasn't quite able to get it out there <laughs> not sure exactly what i was trying to say maybe it'll come to me in time contra over here with this commander um interesting play maybe looking at Diga and uh, an aphis there since he can't get any more demon mechs over yeah it looks like his his production is kind of stalling i don't i don't know what exactly happened here he does have three out there also has some tactical nukes it looks like gonna be grabbing these razorbacks not quite able to kill them but doing some good damage there titans over here from a polygon also a threat yeah a couple titans there quite a few razorbacks i don't know if three demons are able to handle this that's kind of a lot of kind of a lot of uh, t3 gantry units again they do have good single target damage but they don't have the greatest range which is a problem and they also don't have the greatest single target damage for the amount of money that you're investing in them right attack missile launchers able to again trying to do a good amount of damage there Ooh, but they are missing quite heavily and i did call them tack nukes don't mind me contra's a uh, <laughs> little guy over here still making his way there's nothing really over there for him to get unfortunately um maybe when this avis comes up he can degun that or something not entirely sure but i don't know the titans and the razorbacks might be kind of making this a game over scenario for the warm colored team Ooh, nice missile launch there I don't know. It just depends. Yeah, these demons are on their last legs. Ooh, one does go down there. The other one also falling and just evaporating completely. A couple more on their way. It looks like they are quite damaged. Yep, one dies immediately. The other one is full health, but not for long. Yeah, gonna be gonna be Joe over there for him in about two seconds, maybe maybe three. Yeah, there we go. Stuck in Rex. Yeah, the old T3 late game gantry battles happens to the best of us. The old Despot battleship's gonna be making their way over on the right side. Again, ooh, no. He does have a flagship out now. I was gonna say, still no flagships. Kind of crazy. Does have the old Black Hydra out, which is a killer flagship. You can just look at its attack range here. Oops. There we go. Second try. Huge attack range. Just fantastic ship for it. Hurting that economy. Basically, a mobile artillery cannon. Uh, def definitely not something that you want to mess around with. We do have some seaplane gunships here from... 200 IQ, Dr. Smashy, um, and they're, they're actually doing quite well, but unfortunately, Austin does have a little bit of an Air Force, actually probably one of the better, no, it looks like the best Air Force in the whole game, again, like, Air has not really been that impactful this game, um, where there's not been a ton produced, which is, again, it's a little bit interesting with the, these big, like, sea maps, of course, Naval is really important, but Air is as well, um, they're kind of, they're pretty good counter to, to naval players able to just be super fast um, and get in the back line there whereas ships again quite slow like these guys are huge they're behemoths they can do a lot of damage but they are very very slow there so something to keep in mind mammoths trying to make their way across for, by shad hunter here um, yeah doing a little bit of damage on a polygon after suffering so much he's trying to get vengeance for this little beachhead that happened here what 10 minutes ago but uh, not not working out for him so far unfortunately yeah, it looks like, oh no, Contra was wiped out there. Just a matter of time, a ton of Titans and Razorbacks going in there is going to kill you eventually. Uh, yeah, and your demons aren't really suited to T3 Gantry v. Gantry fights there. Um, commander is going to be going down here. So four commanders for each side, relatively even in terms of commanders. But in terms of economy, looks like the cool color team is going to be about 100 to 150 metal better than the warm color team, which is a significant amount 450 versus 350 right it's kind of what we're looking at again reclaim is playing a part there how much of a part kind of hard to say doesn't look like it's too bad though and there we go the black hydra flagship again i just said <laughs> poor poor jester i was like this guy's never going to get off the ground and yeah it, it's looking rough for him here unfortunately <laughs> he's micro into the hilltop run for the hills escape to the trapper something like that uh oh <laughs> mass rover attack from mad dog here Let's see what this accomplishes probably probably not much that's my big guess of the day i know pretty controversial yeah look at this <laughs> oh the old lightning turret imagine if this was a flamer turret we be doing so much more damage there but uh 24 rover kills there nothing to scoff at and the commander gonna be cleaning up the rest of these guys yeah yeah that looks about right resurrected demons by a polygon here probably taken from contra there very very nice of course resurrecting also 
Very, very economical as opposed to just making your own there. A couple of Cataphract Heavy Lasers appear from Shadhunter. Interesting pick. I never really make these guys because they're not really good. They're really slow. Don't have a lot of damage. And they're pretty squishy as well for a T3 unit. Of course, they're also quite cheap for a T3 unit. But for what they provide, I, I, I never really see them as worth it, unfortunately. Nice use of walls here from a Polygon. <laughs> I guess that's pretty good. Stop some raiding. It's about the only use for walls, in my opinion. They just... They just aren't able to impact the game enough for me to ever build them. Kind of a waste of metal, and they just sit there. And your best strategy for Beyond the Reason is always attack. It's advance, only advance. There's really no other way to play the game. If you're playing defensively, you're asking to lose eventually at one point or another. Fusion Reactors teaching me on the edge there of being destroyed, but the Black Hydra moving on to other targets there. Looking like that Aphis, or just Fusion Reactor, sorry, is going to be the next target there, down to 30%. And, ooh, body blocking some shots there, saving that fusion reactor from certain death, but certain death comes nonetheless. Hate to see it. What you hate to see even more if you are the warm color team is a few titans making their way up onto the high ground here. Shadhunter's base might be getting knocked out here, but Shuriken's doing their best, trying to, you know, take these guys out of the fight, if only for a couple seconds. Takes a lot of Shurikens to stop these guys, though. Oh, it doesn't even quite... Oh no, there we go. Stuns that guy for 0.01 seconds, but <laughs> yeah, not really anything that's going to be affecting the games. And while these guys don't actually have anti-air, they do have their lasers, which are, uh, you know, we'll say their hit scan, right? So they're able to hit air stuff pretty easily, especially shurikens, which are low flying units. But Chad Hunter here with the old D-Gun does grab two titans and one blow there. Very nice. The old titan is just sad. His friends have left him. Uh, they are now in the cold embrace of death. Again, hate to see it. Resurrected Demons making their way up here as well. Forcing Shadhunter to try to micro back around. Um, but the commander and the demon quite slow there. And uh, not sure if that would save him anyways. It's looking rough for him. Flamethrower is able to pierce right through that plasma deflector shield. Of course, because flames aren't... Mm, plasma? Question mark? Yes. It, it almost looked like they were bouncing off there. It was like, am I insane? But I'm not insane. I'm just a little crazy. There's a difference there, I'm sure. Yeah, the attack does stall, question mark? I, was, I think he thought the ball work was going to get, uh, was going to be killing that guy, but didn't quite work out for him there. Demon, ooh, does manage to grab that fusion reactor, but does go down eventually. Oh, oh boy, it's looking bad. Do we resign now? Yeah. Yeah, it's looking basically over. Oh, I, I kind of missed Dr. Smash Y'all's getting eliminated by Mr. Austin there. Austin, again, putting in the work here. Honestly, not... I think he's doing, I mean, again, he's doing a fantastic job, really enabling his team to win here, but I think he, he kind of chose a more of a lower impact position here um, by going naval. And, you know, he, he did kill a couple players in the early game, but these guys weren't really, you know, they're bottom of the leaderboard there. Um, so, again, not really a big threat there. Um, but, of course, still did a fantastic job. Able to bomb in the back line and really opening up attack lanes for the rest of his team there. Quite a few Marauders here from Mad Dog. Kind of the last hurrah. Um, again, I don't think this is really able to do enough. If all those demons for Contras wasn't able to destroy the Cool Color team, I don't think a few Marauders at 37 minutes in is going to be doing anything either. But, hey, you know what? If it takes out another player, it takes out another player. That's all I got to say. Screaming Meowsters here. Uh, yeah, low in energy. Not able to cloak there. Does go down. <laughs> not quite the D-Gun I think he was hoping for there. And yeah, again, they're going to be going for Garbage Jerk here, who doesn't even really have an economy or is presenting any threat there. Not the biggest deal. Another commander down there. It's 3v3 now. Um, but I don't think this game is going to come down to commanders. Most of the time, these longer matches do go down to whoever is going to be resigning. And right now, again, looking like it's going to be cool color or the warm color team. Sorry. Down to 220 metal there. They were actively losing their economy here. The only person with any map presence at all, really, is Mad Dog here. That's a decent economy. Sad Panda also with the gantry there, making some Shivas. Um, but again, I don't think I don't think it's enough. I don't. Oh my gosh, is he really only plus 30 metal? Yeah, yeah, that's not that's not the kind of numbers you want to be looking at this late in the game. And those Shivas taking a big drain on the old economy. And yeah, will this one even be produced? Yeah, he does have quite a quite a good amount of stockpile there, that's for sure. But that's only a couple more Shivas. And those Titans are Shiva killers, baby. Does manage to defend, maybe for the last time. Shadow on his base down as well. Experimental Gantry destroyed. 
Only one last Gantry unit out here. The old demon. Aw, oh, poor buddy. No. Don't leave us, friend. He left us. What's his big deal? Oops. Don't look at chat, guys. <laughs> Dr. Smashy. <laughs> Trying his best here, man. He does have a lot of Death Cavalry subs. Could be getting some good reclaim if he's on the other side of the map, maybe. It actually looks like that's all been destroyed. Holy cow, 40,000 metal here. Sitting right on the field. Only only a few Lazaruses to take advantage of it. Yeah, that this is basically a whole economy right here. And uh, yeah, the cool color... Ooh. I was going to say, yeah, the cool color guys are actually leaving, but they've kind of been out of the game for a while there, the guys that did leave there. And yeah, ooh, up to 300 metal there. Nice big spike there, most likely from Reclaim. Some more cutlasses from Dr. Smashy, again, doing his best, trying to stop this advance from a polygon. Looks like it's going to work for now. Um, there's not really a ton here that's, like, super heavy hitting. Um, ooh, a little bit of raid in the back line here from the goons. Fast attack squad from Austin. <laughs> Let him cook. He is cooking indeed. Look at these guys go. Grabbing some mexes there. Drawing some units away from the front line. What more can you ask for? Another Marauder attack from Mad Dog here. Again, I thought this game would be over ages ago. I didn't exactly remember the exact timestamp that it ended, but uh, the warm color team is still holding out here. Yeah, this uh, production line from Polygon is rough. JTL's base being up and running is rough. Austin being uncontested the whole game is awful. And, you know, it's, it is just a matter of time. And, of course, he does have air superiority uncontested. I'm not sure why he's not making, like, bombers or something. That's what I would do if I had, you know, complete air superiority. And looks like he is... No, still fighters. It's so weird. Torpedo gunships, I guess. Yeah, that's okay. But I think bombers at this point in the game, pretty good investment. That's what I'd be doing. I guess he's on that seaplane platform, right? Um, yeah, so does he even really have good bombers? See, but actually, I think the Dam Buster is a... Um, doesn't drop torpedoes anymore. I think it is just a regular bomber unit at this point. I know they had some changes there. I'm not entirely sure what those changes were, um, but I think they have a few experimental settings enabled here. I wish there was a way you could see that, um, but there is not. So I kind of just have to guess like when I see demons or, or other stuff like that. They also might have the experimental air unit uh, setting enabled as well, which makes fighters more costly and slower, um, but more microable from what I've heard. Uh, don't really know how I like that because air is just a whole different sphere beyond no reason that's really the micro less um you basically just pump out fighters and put them on patrol um your game is essentially eco you can have some fun bombing runs and and uh you know gunship stuff um, but in terms of fighters those are kind of just like throwaway units right not throwaway but you don't have to to worry about you know what they're targeting stuff like that a polygon here just sitting cloaked i guess for the vision maybe it's a d-gun if he sees stuff being reclaimed or anything like that might maybe not a bad idea although what can you really see if for me i'd rather be up here but maybe you kind of just for gore that is guy was up there i'm not entirely sure don't know yeah again surprise this game isn't over 42 minutes in here <sighs> honestly I was going to say it's looking inevitable, but the economy for the warm color team doing quite well. Again, how much of that is reclaimed? I don't know, but they're even spiking up to 800 there and then falling back down, it seems. For Sad Panda, he is plus 500, plus 780 at some points. Um, where all that metal's coming from has to be from the reclaim. I don't know where is... There we go. Reclaim units over here. Really, really pumping up his economy. Yeah, it looks like he's around base 100 metal there just from his mexes and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, living off the dead remains of his friend, old Chad Hunter. <laughs> not a good way to live, and certainly not a way to live with any sort of longevity. Speaking of longevity, we do have Cargnuts here. One of my least favorite gantry units of all time. All terrain assault mechs, they have just insanely low DPS. Like, look at them taking down this Marauder. It takes 40 years. They have really light anti-air. They're basically good if you have a lot of mountains, which isn't really this game. I guess if you wanted to go over this cliff face... Maybe they're nice, but uh, that's about it. Sad Panda being hit by here by some Marauders. Some Razorbacks and Titans in the back line for Mad Dog. And, uh... <laughs> Battle of the Base trade. Yeah. It was. Not anymore. Oh, it looks like we do have the, the old Ragnarok coming up here at 8%. Uh, that thing's not going to be coming up anytime soon. ETA, five minutes here. Salvation Army. <laughs> yeah, uh... I mean, it's going to end the game when it comes up, but uh, it's going to be quite a while. 
Um, and the game might as well just be over before then anyways. Yeah, I guess we're going to speed it up a little bit here, too. I always forget I have that feature now with the, the old better computer. I'm getting 16 FPS, almost 30 FPS here? Four, four times speed? Okay, there we go. <laughs> the old Air Force takes me out of it, but, you know, whatever. Air transports. <laughs> yeah, he really does love those air transports, huh? Abductors here as well. Yeah, he's trying to just take whatever he can from the base, which is pretty funny. And when they do die, the thing that they're holding dies too, so you're, you hurt yourself when you, when you take them down, which is kind of funny. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't pay all some rent money, he's here to collect. Sounds about right. There we go. Nope. Where are the bombers, man? Uh, they must have been in that attack, because there's, there's nothing here now, man. That's rough, but he does have the old, the old T1 aircraft plant up there as well. Two of them, actually. I want to see some bombers, man. Come on. They're very cinematic. Yeah. Surprised the resign vote has not gone up. It's quite interesting. No, I want this back. That's rough, man. I don't think you're in any position to negotiate. <laughs> oh, good times. Good times. And it is over. For the one color team. Hope you guys did enjoy. Um, not as much of a back and forth game. Actually, it kind of was. Again, it was kind of the game of the base trade. Um, thought everybody did really well. Uh, excited to see Austin in there, who I've actually, I don't think I've ever seen before. Uh, and I was interested looking at the leaderboard, seeing him all the way up there. I'm like, man, he must be really good. So I wanted to get some kind of clip from him. And, uh, and that's what this game was. So yeah, hope you guys did enjoy. You can see the trifecta, JTL, Ape Oligon, and Mr. Austin there with the insane economy. Um, absolutely just killing it there. And nobody else was really close. Honestly, surprised to see Sad Panda um, doing so poorly economy-wise. I mean, he's, he's in line with, like, the rest of the team and most of the other players, but not in line with the best players on the Cool Color team at all. Anyways. Oh, damage doll. I did want to see that. JTL doing the most there. Um, yeah, Cortaz, while he was still functional, was on track to do, be doing the most. Those demons um, in the main game there, just crushing everything on, on this left side was fantastic. Anyways, hope you guys did enjoy. Hope you do have a good day. I'll see you later. Adios.